In this lesson, we're going to talk about cholecystitis. So let's break this word down just a bit so that we understand it. Itis, we know, means inflammation. Now, in the GU section, we mentioned that cysto means some sort of bladder. And anytime we see the word cholecystitis, think gallbladder. So cholecystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder. Remember from anatomy that the purpose of the gallbladder is to store and secrete bile into the duodenum. Now bile specifically helps in the digestion of fats. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Now patients with cholecystitis are going to have difficulty digesting and processing high fat meals. So the most common cause is gallstones or cholelithiasis, which is crystallized bile salts. So you can see here on this ultrasound, if we look at this, now that there's thickening around the outside of the gallbladder, that's the inflammation. And there's also stones on the inside. You can see these little stones in here. So these stones cause a lot of irritation and can even block the bile duct. So there's also a couple autoimmune conditions that can cause uh, recurrent cholecystitis. So it can be acute or chronic depending on the cause. Now keep in mind, our issue here is we're, we're blocking this up, we're causing this irritation, and we're not able to get this out. So patients are gonna come in, they're gonna report nausea and vomiting. Now, those are pretty general symptoms, right? So we need to dig in a little deeper when our patients report nausea and vomiting and try to get deeper into these symptoms, okay? So we'll see that they have severe right upper quadrant pain, all right? Now it tends to be worse about two to four hours after they eat a high fat meal. That's when the food is making its way into the duodenum, okay? So, and the pain is gonna last for a couple hours, one to three hours. Now when, they're, when you're doing your initial assessment, we have to do a full detailed pain assessment. That's why it's really important to understand when did the pain start, how long did it last, what was the location, because with that information, we're now getting a good picture that this could be a patient with cholecystitis, all right? Now, all these questions really help us make, get a big picture of really what's going on with our patient. You might also see something that's called Murphy's sign. Now, this is pretty specific to gallbladder and liver disease. So it, again, helps us to know what we're dealing with. So what you'll do is you press your fingers or hand up under the ribs on the right side upper quadrant okay so you're going to press your hand or your fingers right there and ask them to take a deep breath if the pain is so bad that they can't even breathe in fully that's going to be a positive murphy's sign all right now and lastly we also do rebound tenderness if you remember from the appendicitis lesson this is when you press on their right upper quadrant and then release, and the pain is actually worse when you release than it was with the initial pressure. So find out when the pain started, where the pain is located, how long it lasted. You can do the Murphy sign, and you can also check for rebound tenderness in this right upper quadrant. How do we manage cholecystitis? Well, the first thing, and one of the most important things we wanna do is we wanna decrease gallbladder stimulation. There's a couple things we can do with that. One of the things we can do is we can keep the patient NPO. If there's no food coming in, then nothing's gonna be stimulating it. But also, we can place an NG tube. That's gonna help decompress the stomach. Now, this means that even stomach acid won't be able to make its way into the duodenum because we're gonna be getting all that stomach acid out. So there's gonna be very, very, very little stimulation of the gallbladder. So NPO, NG tube. Now, if they are eating, we encourage them to eat low fat, non gas forming foods. We can also give analgesics and antiemetics to help manage their symptoms. Remember all this pain, all this nausea vomiting. Now, ultimately, the most common course of treatment with cholecystitis, especially with acute cholecystitis, is what's called cholecystectomy or removal of the gallbladder altogether. How do we manage cholecystitis? Well, the first thing we want to do 
is we want to decrease the amount of gallbladder stimulation. So there's a couple things we can do with that. The first thing we want to do is we want to keep our patients in PO. If there's no food coming in, then we won't be able to stimulate it. But also, we can place the patient on an NG tube. And this is going to do a couple things. It's going to decompress the stomach. This means that not even stomach acid will be making its way into adenum. So now there's very, very, very little stimulation of the gallbladder if that acid can't move forward. Now, if they are eating, we want to make sure they're on a low fat, low fat diet and that they're not eating gas forming foods. All right. Now we also can give analgesics. Remember this patient's going to be in a lot of pain and we give antiemetics. They're going to be experiencing a lot of nausea and vomiting. Ultimately, the most common course of treatment for a patient with cholecystitis, especially acute cholecystitis, is cholecystectomy or removal of the gallbladder altogether. We'll just take this gallbladder all the way out. Now, since the liver is where bile is made, they'll still be able to secrete bile, except that it's not going to be regulated. It will just kind of constantly drip in the, into the duodenum. So the patients will still need to uh, eat low fat diets. So immediately after surgery, which is usually done laparoscopically. Now this is something that you're probably going to see referred to as lap coli. All right. You've probably heard that before lap coli. We want to monitor the patient for pain and signs of infection. We also encourage the patient to use a pillow when coughing that's called abdominal splinting. And this is going to help prevent wound dehiscence and decrease their pain as they do cough. Then we'll also see patients left with what's called uh, a T-tube drain, all right, T-tube drain. That T-tube drain uh, will be inserted right here in the common bile duct. And it will come out of the abdomen into a drainage bag. So externally, we're going to have this drainage bag right here. This will help to drain off any wound drainage, but it will also any excess bile secretion. Now, sometimes it takes the body a week or two to adjust and decrease the amount of uh, bile being produced in the liver. That excess bile can actually build up and put pressure in the, in the duct and, and burst the suture. So we really, 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 it's very important that we have this T-tube drain in there. Now, if that leaks out, the patient is going to be risk for peritonitis. So we insert this drain for about two weeks to help relieve that pressure and keep the duct patent. However, if the output is greater than 500 mils per day, you really want to report that to the surgeon because that's just too high. All right, so really keep a close eye on that. Keep a close eye on their wound uh, and monitor all that. So our top priority nursing concepts for a patient with cholecystitis are nutrition because they'll have difficulty with digestion and maybe MPO, and they're going to have diet adjustments and changes. Comfort, because this is really going to be pretty painful. And GI liver metabolism, because it, if we don't address this, it can cause a backup and cause damage uh, to the liver. Now, make sure you check out the care plan attached to this lesson uh, so you understand kind of the interventions and the rationales behind this. So let's recap. Cholecystitis is an inflammation of the gallbladder. Now, it can make it difficult for the patient to digest their food appropriately, uh, and it can usually be due to gallstones. They're going to experience severe right upper quadrant pain that's worse after a meal, and we'll see a positive Murphy sign. We want to decrease stimulation to the gallbladder by keeping the patient in PO, inserting it in G-tube, or if the patient is eating, they really need to eat the low fat diet. That's extremely important. Now, eventually the best treatment for cholecystitis is to remove the gallbladder altogether with what's called a cholecystectomy. Now they're going to have that T-tube drain inserted after to keep the, uh, the ducts patent while they heal. So make sure you understand how to monitor that and how to report any, uh, anything that needs to be reported. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. 
Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.